Monthly inflation numbers are coming out today, meaning we get to find out how much of our life savings, paycheck, and grocery budget is left after the Fed and its pet banks are done with it. Markets are expecting the same bad news we've had all year, that inflation is not going anywhere. Specifically, it's expecting 0.4% on the month, which is an annual inflation rate of 5% meaning you lose $50 on every thousand you make and $50 on every thousand you have. Now, 5% is about two and a half times the Fed's alleged inflation target, which is pretty pathetic after the most aggressive rate hikes in 50 years, actually the most reckless rate hikes going by bank collapses. So what is coming next? The main drivers of inflation right now are one, federal spending, two, the bank crisis, and three, the Fed itself. In short, expect federal spending to drive inflation up, expect the bank crisis to push it lower before hitting us down the road with higher inflation, and expect the Fed to run up and down the field like a helicopter parent at a soccer game, screaming at the umpire and shooting fresh trillions at anything that makes a sudden move. Now, taking each in turn, if, as expected, nothing comes from the debt ceiling play fight, the trillion dollars federal spending spree keeps grinding along, as allegedly small government Republicans settle back to their traditional role as uniparty sidekick, fleecing the people so long as they get their crony crumbs and foreign wars. Next is the banks, where despite the Fed and Treasury dumping trillions of your money into bailouts, we can actually see net deflation. This is because money is flooding out of banks to money markets faster than bailouts are pouring it in. And thanks to the magic of fractional reserve, that flood effectively cancels most of the dollars that moved. Banks cannot Xerox them into more fake dollars. As for the bailout money itself, going by 2008, the banks will sit on it instead of lending it out, savoring their stolen goods instead of letting you have a ride. Bad for the economy, bad for credit, super for the bankers. Now, in theory, if that flood of bank depositors fleeing collapsing banks paying 0.1% for not collapsing money markets paying 5%, if that flood gets big enough, we could even see deflation for a minute. But don't get excited. Stuff will not actually get cheap because any modern central bank that sees a falling price cranks up the money printers to 11 to gobble it all up. Plus, unless this is the end of fractional reserve banking, sadly, it is probably not. All of that money will eventually come back to be Xeroxed once more. As always, inflation's a ratchet. Put it all together, and short-term inflation is a tug of war between big spenders in Washington and money-losing banks, all in the backdrop that we've still got a big hunk of inflation saved up in the system, like a golf ball in a snake. Given that they printed 35% of the money, but so far we've only actually enjoyed 16% of that in inflation. So there's a double-digit chunk of inflation waiting for us, even if they don't do something stupid, which they certainly will. All right, we'll be watching. See you next time.